According to Children's Mental Health Ontario, approximately half of the parents in Ontario have concerns about their child's level of anxiety. And this isn't just parents being overly concerned. 62% of children and teenagers report having concerns about their feelings of stress and anxiety. And these statistics, they were reported prior to the current pandemic. Hi everyone, I'm Trevor Sullivan, Sullivan Associates Clinical Psychology. And today I'm gonna to talk about how to help children and teens cope with stress and anxiety. Before we get started, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. And if you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. That way, when we release more videos like this, you'll get notified. Anxiety is the most common mental health issue facing children and teens. And with the current pandemic, it's quite likely that these problems with stress and anxiety are only gonna become more prevalent. And when it comes to managing these feelings, it's helpful to have a number of different strategies at your disposal that you can use at any time. Today we're gonna to focus on six strategies. And I've included a few that you can implement as a parent without your child even knowing. As though it can be difficult at times to get your child or teen to use these strategies. For my first strategy, I suggest making an effort to cut back on your child's sugar intake. And I apologize in advance, but attempting to do this increases your level of stress and anxiety because it very well might. Cutting back on sugar is something as a parent that we usually try to do to help with our child's physical health. But there's strong evidence to show that cutting back on sugar can help your child's mental health as well. A 2017 study by Dr. Annika Newbel and colleagues found that consuming over 67 grams of sugar a day led to a 23% increase in feelings of anxiety and depression. And this study involved adults. So I'd expect the same amount of sugar could potentially cause even more challenges with depression and anxiety for children and teens. And when you consider the typical diet, you add in a couple of snacks, sugary drink, and it's not very hard to reach 67 grams of sugar in a day, especially when regular eating patterns get disrupted with stressful life events such as the current pandemic. So do your best to try and minimize your child's sugar intake whenever possible. Every little bit helps. The second thing I'd suggest, attempt to minimize your child's sedentary behaviors, such as watching TV, spending time on electronic devices, such as computers and iPads. Okay, so I can literally hear you thinking, this video should have been called how to dramatically increase parental stress immediately. I apologize, but bear with me here. Once again, we have another activity that most parents are trying to decrease in order to benefit physical health. But there's strong mental health benefits as well. As researchers have found that sitting too much also leads to higher levels of anxiety and depression. Since 2007, anxiety disorders in teens have increased by over 20%. And as it stands currently, one in three teens between the ages of 13 and 18 will experience a problem with an anxiety disorder. That's high. And no doubt, some of the increased anxiety disorders can be accounted for by the increase in sedentary behavior. As children and teens become less active, as technology takes up more space in our lives. So I'd encourage you to promote any physical interests that your children and teens have that they can do either indoors or outdoors. A couple quick examples that come to mind for indoor activities, would be jumping on a little mini trampoline or playing a game on a gaming system such as the Nintendo Wii that requires you to move. For outdoor activities, warmer weather is finally here. And with phase two of the economy opening up, there are plenty of options available, such as going to parks, biking, swimming. It's also a good idea to do physical activity as a family. It's not only to get the added benefit of togetherness, but it's also a good way to get your kids started with physical activity if they're struggling to get moving. And there's plenty of research to show that as little as 20 minutes of physical activity can help to reduce symptoms of anxiety. And only 20 minutes in nature, which is all around us here in Thunder Bay in Northwestern Ontario, it can also help to lower anxiety. So taking a nice family walk outdoors not only helps reduce anxiety through exercise and being in nature, you also get the added benefit of connecting with family or friends as well. And one more quick tip here. The early in the day you get moving, the better. Once kids and teens get locked onto technology, it becomes much harder to get them to transition to a different activity. For my third strategy, I want you to encourage your child or teen to tell you when they're feeling particularly anxious. Not only is it helpful for them to share their feelings, but encouraging them to label their feelings is particularly helpful. In a 2012 study by Dr. Katarina Krakansky and colleagues, they found that the more fearful words that people use to describe their anxiety, the more helpful it is. And this is likely the opposite of what you would have expected, as common sense would seem to dictate that it'd be more helpful to use calming words to lower anxiety. 
Using calming words has an important place in managing stress and anxiety, but first, it's important to label your feelings. And if scary words best describe those feelings, those are the words you want your child or teen to use. And once they've labeled their feelings, sharing those feelings with someone who's understanding and accepting can help even more. For my fourth strategy, I'd suggest encouraging your child or teen to use deep breathing, especially when they're feeling anxious. As we become more stressed in life, breathing tends to move upstairs from the diaphragm to the chest, which leads to shorter breaths, and makes us more susceptible to feeling anxious. And there are a number of different styles of deep breathing, and there's some debate in the literature about which of these methods is most effective. In a 2016 study by Dr. Anup Sharma and colleagues, they found that yogic breathing was an effective technique for not only lowering anxiety, but also for improving mood. With yogic breathing, you take several slow and calm breaths from your diaphragm and alternate them with several fast, stimulating breaths. If you'd like to see a good example of yogic breathing, instead of me butchering it here in this video, I suggest going to YouTube, watching a video called Pranayama, Full Yogic Breathing Explained. For anyone interested in watching this, I'll add a link to our video description for this video. If you choose to watch the video, it's really important not to get too caught up in technique. The main thing you want to accomplish is to have your child or teen take slow, deep breaths from their belly instead of taking short, fast breaths from high in their chest. And how you approach deep breathing your child is probably going to be very important. Simply telling them to breathe more deeply when they're stressed or anxious probably isn't going to be met with the best reaction. With young children, I would let them know you're just going to do a few deep breaths together and then count them out loud. You could aim for as little as five or ten breaths together. Give them the idea. With teens, I'd suggest going through a similar process, but focusing on just demonstrating a few breaths. Because if anything like my teen, they're less likely to join in with you. So if your child's willing to try deep breathing with you, great. If not, at least you've planted the seed for them to try it later when they're alone. Next, once you've calmed the body, it's important to calm the mind as well. Using calming thoughts is a good way to not only help your child or teen become more relaxed in the moment, but also help them to avoid catastrophizing which means making the problem worse in their mind than it actually is. Calming thoughts can be different for everyone. And it's helpful to have a few thoughts or phrases ready in advance that you can share with your child or teen. Because attempting to come up with them right in the heat of the moment can be very challenging. Calming phrases can be something as simple as, everything will be okay, this feeling will go away soon, we will get through this together, or we were able to deal with these feelings before, we can do it again. Essentially, any words or phrases that your child or teen finds comforting in the moment. And for my last strategy, you never want to underestimate the value of simply being there for your child, using physical or emotional closes if they're experiencing stress or anxiety. I know you don't need a scientific study to tell you how helpful it can be to support your child, but hey, this could be a helpful reminder for any parent out there who has a teen at home and feels like they've become a little aloof over time and no longer needs your support emotionally. In 2015 study, by Dr. Jessica Lohead and colleagues. They found that both emotional and physical closeness to loved ones helped to reduce feelings of stress and anxiety. In Dr. Lohead's study looked at how well adolescent girls manage stress when they were asked to spontaneously give a speech. And I suspect that the reason the researchers pick giving a speech is because this task is always rated as one of the most anxiety-provoking things to do. So much so, when people are typically surveyed about what causes the greatest feelings of stress and anxiety, Public speaking is usually listed as number one. Any guesses about what number two is? It's fear of dying. So needless to say, there's no greater stressor than public speaking for most people. So what they found in the study is that girls who are physically close to their mothers, and in the study, they measured this with physical closeness by having their mom hold their hands, or also they looked at girls who described feeling emotionally close to their moms. And in these cases, they experienced the least amount of stress and anxiety when public speaking. So never downplay the importance of being emotionally available for your child, especially if they're going through a stressful or anxiety-provoking time. To provide a quick recap, first, you want to cut back on your child's sugar intake whenever possible. As little as 67 grams of sugar a day has been shown to increase levels of stress and anxiety. Second, encourage your child or teen to minimize sedentary behaviors, such as sitting for extended periods of time, watching TV, or spending time in devices. And the more you can replace sedentary behaviors with physical activity, the better. Third, encourage your child to label their feelings. 
This is an important first step. So identifying how they feel can help them to better manage feelings of stress and anxiety. Fourth, encourage your child or teen to use deep breathing whenever possible. This is not only a great technique to manage stress and anxiety, it's also a great tool for physical health as well. Number five, encourage your child to use calming self-talk when they feel stressed or anxious. It's a good idea to help your child figure out what to say in advance before they become anxious. So they'll know what to do when they need it. And lastly, I encourage you to use physical and emotional closeness if your child or teen is struggling with feelings of stress or anxiety. Even science agrees. You can never underestimate the power of a kind word or a hug. So hope you found these strategies helpful. If you did, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button below. If you're already a subscriber, please feel free to like and share the video. And if you're experiencing challenges implementing these strategies, please contact us at Sullivan Associates Clinical Psychology. So now it's your turn. What strategies are you gonna try? Are you ready to cut back on your child's sugar intake? Or make a point of encouraging your child to label their feelings? Or do you have a different strategy you use to help your child or teen deal with feelings of stress and anxiety? Please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.